Howdy everybody. I'm going to go over some basics on how Lifeflix interacts and uses files and makes changes to files because I think it can get a little bit complicated, but one of the reasons we uh, invented Lifeflix is so you have an interface for all your files and your catalog is very visual. And so you can see thumbnails and play videos and not have to go onto your computer and uh, kind of look at your files and play them in individually from there. The first step as you probably know at this point if you've imported a tape, when you click import and you name your tape, this tape is lollipop tree because my wife made a lollipop tree for my kids. I'm not gonna rewind the tape. This name we put in here actually does name your video files, okay? So when I hit import, the videos start flowing in. There's the lollipop tree and you can see on the left side over here, the tape starts building. So this is the tape coming in. It names that tape Lollipop Tree 2007. I'm gonna let that play for a second. There's my son, so cute. Uh, and it's building the different videos. So it's, we've already got four different videos that have come in on this tape. And each one of those videos becomes a different file or video file that I'll show you now. Let's continue with how the files are managed and named. As I said before, when we name it Lollipop Tree 2007, if we go into our Apple Finder, I'll show you that the actual file name itself, like I said, is in Lifelix Tapes. And if we scroll all the way down, we actually found Lollipop Tree 2007. So that's the name of the tape. Inside of the tape is all your individual video files. And as you can see, we also name those video files the same thing, Lollipop Tree. And we actually just take Lollipop Tree 2007 and we go one, two, three, four. So if you have 10 video clips, it's up to 10. And if you have 85, it's up to 85. A quick note about how Lifelix interfaces with the files. Like other Mac applications, uh, the native photos application, maybe you use Picasa, um, other applications, we are actually just pointing to and viewing the files that are saved on your computer. So in general, the best way to interface, your f interface with your files from Lifelix is to do all your changes from the Lifelix application. Then that goes and changes the file name or location. If you do change the file location from your finder, like you move a file from your computer to your hard drive, unfortunately, uh, Lifelix loses the connection. You'll still have the file, but you just won't be able to see the files anymore from your Lifelix catalog. Let me show you a few things on how you can use the files and how you can change names, etc. So if I go back into Lifelix, and I see my tape called Lollipop Tree 2007. I now know that the tape name inside of my files is Lollipop Tree or my folder is Lollipop Tree 2007. If I click on my scenes, I see I've got four video files all named Lollipop Tree 2007 1, 2007 2, etc. These correspond exactly with the files inside of Lifelix inside of your scenes menu. So the first one, I know I'm going over this repetitiously, uh, Lollipop Tree 2007-1 corresponds with this. Okay, so here's where it gets kind of cool. So if you want to change the name of this because your scenes are different than the master name you gave it, you can put in um, Big Party 2007 and if I basically change that, you can see it changes the, the file name over here. And that's how you actually change. Change the name inside of Lifelix, not the file itself. Okay, a couple other things. So let's just say um, I don't want this file at all. You go in your keyboard, just hit the delete button. And as I hit this delete button, notice that the file over here disappears. Bam, it's gone. Um, here's a little trick. Uh, you can use an undo feature which is command Z or in the file menu, menu uh, edit menu undo. And if I undo that file actually reappears on this side. One quick question I wanted to go over that I just got from a customer. If you're saving to an external hard drive, like I am here, you can see I've got my devices, my external hard drive, it's little backup 
uh, and that's on the external drive. If I'm using the external hard drive, it does not save anything on your computer. So if you want to save space on your computer, we're putting all of the files onto your external hard drive. As a final note, I thought it'd be helpful uh, to review the types of compression techniques we use, uh, both if you don't understand compression and if you do understand compression. Uh, this will be a little more basic and for novices. Uh, you can uh, send us an email if you have more technical questions or look at our tech specs online. So first off, when you import tapes, you have two options. You can use compression or you can not use compression. It's a checkbox in the import dialog. And so if you uh, do not use compression or you uncheck the box, we leave the files in their original DV format. That is the format that your camera used when you captured videos. And uh, it's a good format, uh, but we think it's unnecessary to keep it in DV and we recommend that you use compression. And Lifelix uses a very modern compression called MPEG-4 or MP MP4. Uh, that is the same compression that YouTube uses uh, and if you do look at the two videos, the uncompressed or the DV footage and the MP4 footage, uh, you'll see that you won't see a difference. The cool thing is uh, the MP4 video files, the default in Lifelix, is one-tenth the size. So that's about one gigabyte per tape imported versus uh, nearly uh, 12 gigabytes per tape imported if you don't use uh, compression. Uh, the other small thing is you'll see the files on your computer end in .mov. That is actually a QuickTime wrapper. Uh, it just allows the computer or the QuickTime application or the Windows Media Player application to understand what file that is and read it. It's very similar to uh, Microsoft Word, the .doc or uh, other really common applications. Hope that helps. And last, last, not least, of course, there's more information on our website at lifelix.com. Thank you.